On today's guide. What to do when there are more than one of something. Making plurals. Computers are easier to use than they seem. We discover how to use the internet to plan a trip. And, ever been confused by economics? Got no interest in interest rates? Our guide busts the jargon that talks about your money. It seems like these days information comes at us from all angles, from newspapers, phones, the internet, radio and from television. The way information is given to us through the media has changed over the last few years. For example, someone can now use the internet to watch the weather change at this very moment in Siberia if they want to. The internet has made local stories available throughout the modern world. It's also changed the way that many people access banks, news, music, films and services of all kinds. Computers have really revolutionised the way we communicate with each other. The internet can help us to find out things we want to know more about rapidly and efficiently, more than we ever could have imagined. Of course, there's more than one way to source information. When we talk about more than one, we're referring to plurals. And here are some tips on how to spell when there's more than one of something. A boy with an apple. So what do the words boy and apple have in common? Well, they're singular. Singular means one. So there's one boy with one apple. But what happens if we have two, or maybe even ten boys, with ten apples? Then the word becomes plural. A word that is plural means there is more than one of something. If you have a look around, you'll see many words that are plurals. In general, you make a word plural by adding an S to the end of it. For example, pair becomes pairs, phone becomes phones, and bag becomes bags. Some more examples are horse, horses, car, cars, and table, tables. We'll be showing you some more examples later in the programme. Plurals are all around us and when we're writing they're very common, so we'll be looking at more plurals later. Now though, we're joined in studio by Kevin O'Duffy from Offaly and by Tommy Gibbons from Sligo, who've both gone back into education recently. Tommy, what courses are you doing at the moment then? At the moment I'm doing adult literacy and I find it ever so useful in that because any time I used to be out shopping and things like that, I wasn't too sure of the change I was getting. Now before ah, I go to the worst. checkup, I can exactly know what I have to pay. Yeah. And then from them there, you can go on to other things. And I also done computer courses in there as well. I done a level four computer course. I've always been confused about com computers and that. And um, now this has cleared everything on for me and that, and I use the computers quite a lot. Kevin, but what courses are you doing at the moment then? At the moment now, I'm just starting uh, the Leave Insert course, Brilliant. which is a two year course. Um, Prior to that, I had did the junior cert in English and I've also done the junior cert in maths. But when I went, started off first in, in Tullamore, I went into a group initially and uh, did my city and guilds there and then I progressed on to uh, computers. Mm -hmm. um, like Tommy, learned all the tech terminology and the technical jargon that goes with computers and uh, ended up buying my own computer. I have one at home now and Fantastic. What yeah. about uh, Leaving Cert? What subjects are you doing? Just the English. Okay. Leaving Cert English. Yeah. It's a two year course. And, and do you think you'll do more courses then after that? Well, hopefully, no. Yeah. yeah. Maybe go into a uh, third level if possible, if there's a vacancy somewhere along the line. Now, I'd both of you are also incredibly busy with a big, long list of hobbies. Um, you, Tommy, play the organ and piano. That's one of your hobbies. I do indeed. Do you read music? I do now. For a lot of years I couldn't and I was always loved the sound of piano and things like that. But I went in and I got books on it and I could not understand the music for the piano and that. But after being with the VEC Alec Belden, I went in into the library and I took out a book. And within a short time I could read the piano music. I can play a bit of Beethoven now, I can play Danny Boy, I can play the banks of the old I.O. And it's after opening up another branch of life to me as well. And do you think, is there any similarity between learning to read music and learning to read text? 
There would be, because in the past, text um, used to um, frighten me because um, sometimes it was the same as somebody saying, here, look at a jigsaw, and them throwing it down and all the bits being scattered everywhere. Yeah. But in the VEC Alec building, they taught me how to break down the words, how to look at them properly and construct it, and it all became much, much clearer to me and easier. Do you find music relaxing, playing music? It does, mm -hmm. and um, particularly in the piano music, and there's sometimes you might hit a certain note and it sends a little shiver up your backbone, a pure joy, and yes. it's so pure and perfect. In a world of your own. In a world of my own and so relaxing. Well, Kevin, you go into a, a world of your own as well, but it's an underwater world yeah, and right. underwater photography yeah, is yeah. Uh, one of your favourite hobbies. <sighs> Why underwater? How did you get into that? Well, underwater photography for me, is it's a long story from where I started to um, um, when I was 14 years of age, I um, fell off the pier in Spiddle and I almost drowned. And I had an, an awful fear of water yeah. for years and years and years. And uh, just one summer's day, I happened to be down in Salt Hill, a real hot day in the summer, and um, all these youngsters, three and four, five years of age, were running out by me and uh, jumping into the water. And I said, if they can do it, I don't see why I can't do it. So on the way home that evening, we signed up for uh, swimming lessons. It was a bit daunting getting into the pool the first time. It took a while to get used to getting into the water and getting the, the water coming up my body up. It was a challenge. It was a big challenge, yeah. a big challenge. And, but I, I eventually mastered it and I became quite a good swimmer. Mm. And then I saw um, an advertisement for um, a try a dive in Leisureland in Galway. And from there on, I just went over, tried it once I got the mask on and uh, the regulator in my mouth and realised I could breathe underwater. I was hooked ah, that's and the I never looked back. Well, never. you're absolutely brilliant at your underwater photography. Let's have a look at some of them here. That one was taken uh, in off the west coast uh, in Inishboffin. Yeah, beautiful place. And you're telling me this is in the seas off Inishboffin, so off, we've got yeah. this range of sponges and seaweed. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. There's a vast um, array of life off the west coast, from seals to fish. Mm. To everything, everything, yeah, everything. You haven't photographed the whale yet? So. I'm not yet, no, <laughs> but I'm hoping to. And the last one? That one now is from the Red Sea. That's stunning as well. Yeah, stunning. Mm -hmm. The Red Sea is, is really the, the pinnacle of diving. If you want to, you know, you haven't dived till you dive the Red Sea, really. You know. What skills do you need to be a good underwater photographer then? Basically, you want to be f uh, a good diver, really, mm -hmm. and be able to control your buoyancy uh, very effectively to be able to stop in the water and hover in the water to line up your shot. And also not to frighten the subject away when you're trying to get into position because fish can swim very fast. They can actually swim faster than I can. Yeah. And but some of them have teeth. And some of them have teeth, yeah, very <laughs> sharp teeth indeed. But um, no, just to be able to hover in the water, get your buoyancy right, it, it's really the key thing. And I suppose have a good eye for, for uh, some... Yeah. Uh, shot or whatever. You know? Now, Tommy, art is another interest of yours as well, as well as um, it playing is the piano. Um, and you even brought in a painting I that have you painted especially for the programme. I spent it especially wow, for the programme. And um, the picture is mainly about priests and to show that there's a lot of good priests out there. Mm -hmm. And this priest, he's coming away from the world and he's all torn up and that, and he's been shown the, the Eucharist and things like that again. And at the front here... Yeah, are these flowers or...? They're actually braille. And what this actually says, covenant of his love. Now, I would have actually found help for that through the VEC as well, because they showed me how to read indexes and things like that. So I went through the indexes of encyclopedias and I got the meaning of Braille. And um, so I thought, why not put that in there? Because we can be so blind um, to things we should see. And as well as um, that, even a person who's partially sighted or that, they can actually feel this um, with their finger and be able to tell what it's about. Now that's a first. I've never come across that being done in art before. So you're you using for... all of these new skills that you're I picking up indeed. on the courses I, in your artwork? In my artwork as well. And like I'm finding out about the history of them things as and well and that. and. Um, putting it all in together basically on that floor. Fantastic. So you're both finding that things that you're learning on the courses you're doing 
you're then using in your hobbies as well. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I often find it as well, even when I'm fixing my own car and that, I'm to save the money. And um, before car manuals and that, there were always a bit of problem on the time and on the tappets and that. Now I find it easier to read the instructions, go ahead, do my own time and do the tappets, make the car more economical and save on the money as well. Fantastic. And speaking of money, Kevin, you're selling some of your photographs. That's right, yeah. They are for sale, yeah. Yeah. So, that's so I, have, uh, I have sold a few of them, yeah. Uh, but I also ha I had an exhibition in Ballinasloe. Uh, I had a lot more photographs, you know, but most of them are sold now. So. Yeah. Well, more and more people are using the internet to book trains and planes and hotel rooms, tours, and even to source other travellers' opinions on hotels and resorts. Here's a really useful guide to planning a trip on the internet.